Hello everyone, this is the Circuit Python Weekly for Monday, February 26th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. Circuit Python is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Circuit Python development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. Final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pins messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. First is community news. This will look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by numbers separate from our status updates. Third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to in the next week. And the fifth part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, we will get started with community news. And MicroPython version 1.22.2 was released. MicroPython was just updated. Changes are described as a patch release for RP2, DMA, UART, and BLE, ESP32, BLE, Renaissance, I squared C. That is on GitHub. And CircuitPython 9.0 Beta 2 released with urge to update for Memento. CircuitPython 9.0 Beta 2, a beta release for 9.0, is the new unstable release. This release has known bugs that so will be addressed before 9.0 final. And that's on the Adafruit blog and GitHub. And then Project of the Week, making a MIDI kalimba with Raspberry Pi Pico and CircuitPython. Converting a kalimba instrument to MIDI, use with capacitive sensing. Raspberry Pi Pico and CircuitPython, that was on Hackster and YouTube. That looked like a really cool project. And this and more is available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub, mention Anne Engineer on Twitter or Mastodon with hashtag CircuitPython, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And that is community news. Next up is state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. And this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core, libraries, and Blinka. But overall, there were 32 pull requests merged by 20 authors. Uh, there were eight reviewers and 29 closed issues by 10 people, 22 opened by 18 people. And then Scott, are you available to read the core? Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. Okay, so for the core, we had 13 pull requests merged from 11 different authors, uh, which is awesome. Uh, some newish names to the core, Hexthat, uh, Blitzity DIY, Just Mobilize, NoQman, Mario Pesh, 
Romki, Deshipu, and W. Tamura are all new names, so thanks to them. Four reviewers, including Blitz City DIY. Thanks, Liz, for reviewing. Um, we had ni- 19 open poll requests at the times these stats were taken, which puts us well under our one page 25 goal, uh, which is awesome. We had 14 closed issues by six people and 14 opened by 11 people, so we're net even or net zero. Uh, and we had over 10 people opening issues, which is great. Um, for a total of 669 open issues, uh, we track prioritization for Adafruit funded folks via the milestone system. We have eight active milestones. Um, and at the time these were taken, we had five issues not assigned to milestone, but uh, there's a note here. I suspect Dan triaged them already. So thank you, Dan. Um, 10.0 has two open issues. These are things we don't want to forget to do when we get to the next major uh, version. Uh, at this time, we had seven open issues for uh, 9.0, which are the things that we're trying to close so we can do a release candidate, um, which we're trying to do sooner, sooner, sooner. Uh, we have 17 open issues for 9xx. Those are things that we want to do after 9.0 is stabilized. We have zero open issues on 8.2x, which is great. Um, that is the like current stable version. Um, and that's an overview of our issue priorities. Uh, and that's it for the core. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. And now we'll hear from Tim for the libraries. Hello. Uh, thanks, Liz, for libraries this week. This section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, which are Python-level libraries that help you either interact with specific uh, pieces of hardware, like a driver library, or uh, a helper library that allows you to create projects and not worry about as many of the low-level details, such as um, things like the portal base library and stuff like that. All these libraries can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then whatever the name of the library is. Across all of them this week, we had 19 pull requests merged by 11 authors, which is great to see. Uh, of the uh, 11 authors this week, the names that were newer or uh, less frequent, less uh, familiar to my eye at least, were uh, David Menting, Cry Vosa, uh, and Reza N. Uh, so thanks to those folks, as well as all of our other uh, contributors whose names look a little more familiar to me. Uh, we did have seven reviewers for those 19 pull requests, which is also good to see. Uh, thanks to our seven reviewers who are all uh, more frequent contributors to the project. Um, of the uh, 19 merged pull requests, the oldest ones were 114 and 110 days old, respectively. And the newest ones, like usual, were just one day old. That leaves us, uh, after the week, with um, 48 open pull requests, the oldest of which is 557 days, and the newest is only one. Um, there were 14 issues that were closed by six people, as well as six new issues opened up by five people. So we're down, uh, net down a couple of issues this week. That leaves us with 737 open issues. And of those, there are 19 of them that are labeled good first issue, uh, which you can find listed over on circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the place to go if you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things. Uh, on that page, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. If you're looking to contribute, um, that's a good place to start. If you want to, uh, excuse me, if you're interested in reviewing, then you can check the list of open PRs. Take a look at the code. If you've got the hardware, you can try it out. Otherwise, uh, just look for syntax, spelling, um, comments, all of that kind of issue, uh, all that kind of stuff, and leave a comment over on GitHub letting us know that you looked at it. Uh, Once you're comfortable with that and you've done that for a few uh, libraries, we can also get you leveled up to the review team so you can leave official reviews, uh, although comments are just perfect as well. Uh, If you are interested in contributing on the coding side of things or documentation, you can take a look at the open issues over on circuitpython.org. You can sort by label, which is how you're going to be able to find those good first issues if those are the ones you're looking for. Um, There's also bug and enhancement labels if you're looking for some more uh, complex things to get started on. Uh, We do have guides for contributing to CircuitPython with Git and GitHub. uh, And if you need help with any of that sort of stuff, we're also, uh, there's loads of folks on the Discord who are always uh, around and willing to help out. So if you want to get started with contributing, but you're having trouble or you don't know 
uh, where to start or you need help, uh, feel free always to come and join us on the Discord. Ask for help there. Uh, we want to make it easy for everyone to be able to contribute uh, no matter their skill set um, and backgrounds. Uh, rounding out the, the library stats for the week, we got the PyPI stats, which show over the past week we had uh, 116,563 PyPI downloads across the 325 libraries. The top tens list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look at those, as is the uh, list of new and updated libraries, uh, the most notable of which this week is the uh, Connection Manager library, which was newly released, and we'll be hearing a bit more about that later on. Uh, but that's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tim. And now we'll hear from Melissa about Blinka. Hello. Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had zero pull requests merged. Um, there are currently six open pull requests amongst all the repositories. There was one closed issue by one person and two open by two people, leaving a net of 86 open issues. There were 13,166 PyPI downloads in the last week. 11,340 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 129 boards. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And that is a state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. And next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. So I'll kick things off. Uh, hug report to Dan for excellent release notes for CircuitPython 9 Beta 2. Melissa for fixing the web workflow code editor and Scott for his fixes to web workflow in general and a group hug. And then I'll read for Carter, who is text only. Uh, hug report to Dan for forum help, finding a missing parentheses pair and troubleshooting a quote unquote feature with tiny code reader firmware. And speaking of Dan, we'll hear from him next. Okay, thanks. Oh, so thanks to Taylor Yu and ADCC for working on a uh, fixing a USB CDC issue that's come up on RP2040, on Mac OS specifically. I'll put that in in a minute. And thanks to Justin for his connection manager code and all the revamping regularization of socket use across libraries that he's he's cleaning up that's really a nice thing that's going on and it's getting smaller which is really nice okay great thank you and now i'll read for dj devon who is text only uh tanut for an informative deep dive on host usb and streaming bit rates and dj ekin for reviewing and approving two cad parts submissions and now we'll hear from foamy guy all right. Uh, thank you, Liz. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Scott for looking into some USB host issues that I had opened uh, on the core repo during deep dive. Um, that was interesting to peel back the, uh, the layers, so to speak, and see inside of what's in there. Uh, thanks to Jeff for a change that allows uh, using the USB host power pin with digital I.O. so that you can toggle the power. Um, thanks to Dan for looking into an issue with uh, GitHub permission settings on the uh, new library repo, Connection Manager. And uh, also thanks to Justin for working on Connection Manager and all of the changes in the associated libraries that will use it. Uh, echoing what Dan said, I think that's a, a really great effort uh, and a group hug for everyone. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And now ADCC. Thank you, Liz. Uh... First off, uh, big thanks to Argon Blue for uh, diligent work on uh, number 8824. That's the hard fault affecting Mac OS and RP2040 when disconnecting a USB CDC ACM endpoint. Uh, it's been a fun bug. And to Dan H for a uh, tremendous amount of help getting uh, USB tracing up and running. And uh, that's it. Great. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Jerry N. Hi. Um, yeah, thanks to, to Jeff Jepler um, and everybody else who was responsible for the um, really great support for the uh, Pi cameras leading up to Memento and the ESP32 camera support. It's really been nice to work with. And, uh, and a group hug. And my cat says hi, too. 
Thank you, and hello to your cat. Um, now I'll read for Justin, who is text only. Uh, Tanute for pumping through my PRs. Dan H for getting connection manager on Read the Docs and in the bundle. And Jepler for all their comments that help steer me in the right direction. And now we'll hear from Maker Melissa. I just wanted to give a group hug to everyone. That's it. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Tanute. Hello. Uh, hugs to Tyeth, Snakey Maker Cat, DJ Devin3, Anic Data, Elk Pekinian, Justin, and Dishibu. Uh, for helping folks in help with Circuit Python uh, just over the weekend. So if you've helped before, I, I this is not exhaustive, but uh, thanks to those folks. Thank you. And now I'll read for Tectric, who is not present. Uh, Foamy guy for the Circuit instruction fixes and a bunch of readmes. Uh, Dan H for for trying out my Circ Firm CLI tool. Thanks for helping to iron out some bugs and usability issues and a group hug. And that was Hug Reports. Uh, next up is Status Updates. So Status Updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. And with that, I'll get started. So I have missed the past two meetings because uh, I was trying to get guides done in time for the Ask an Engineer deadline, which is kind of unofficially Tuesday morning. So often Monday afternoons, I have to kind of get rocking. Um, but I was able to get the cat thermal printer working properly with the Memento and document it in a guide that went live last week. I'm really excited about this project and I'm thrilled I was able to finally get it working thanks to some added delays in the library. And I've also been working on a guide for the new Itsy Bitsy ESP32 board. Uh, I had a board dev to start Python and was able to use it with web workflow. And now we'll hear from Dan. Okay. Um, so as mentioned uh, last weekend above, uh, we needed people who have the Memento board to update to uh, 900 beta 2. So I published that in about five or six places. It seems to be working out just fine. People are updating and they're reporting success. Um, so uh, ADCC and um, John Romke and some other people have also noticed uh, we still have continuing problems with macOS Sonoma. The original bug has gone away, but now it's the case that when you write to drives, fat drives that are less than a gigabyte in size, it's about 40 times slower uh, than drives that are larger than that size. So ADCC has um, uh, documented that, and I think I'll do the same thing so that we can put more pressure on Apple to try to get this fixed. Um, I've been working on 900 issues. Two of them I decided were not vital to 900, so I pushed them forward. Right now I'm looking at a storage leak on NRF uh, when you do connections over and over again. And I'd also like to test a bunch of Circuit Playground Express projects or other projects on small boards to see if they're more prone to memory errors because we don't, we no longer have um, the long lived storage, which tended to make um, uh, storage fragmentation uh, less likely. So I was going to try some learning guide projects and use CPX. But if anybody's interested in this, it would be great for somebody to do. It's just a matter of getting stuff out of the learn guides and trying to run the code, and or even just try to see if the code imports. Uh, and if it doesn't import and you get a memory or memory error, see if you uh, if you turn it into an MPY file, if it works fine after that. So if anybody'd like to try that, it's uh, on some things, that would be great. I will plan to do it myself. Okay. Great. Thanks, Dan. And now I'll read for DJ Devin, who is text only. Uh, received my ST7796S Featherwing and Cutie Pie BFF adapter PCBs. Went on show and tell with them. To my knowledge, there isn't a 480 by 320 TFT BFF like the TFT Featherwing. So I made one and it works great. 
There are no free pins left on the BFF except RX and TX, touch display and SD card work, and he included a photo in the notes. Uh, submit a 2.5 millimeter matrix panel model to Adafruit CAD parts repository. And currently working on a model for the 5 millimeter pitch matrix panel. Making models available to the public is important for those who want to design their own brackets, stands, or enclosures. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right, thank you. Um, last week I submitted a PR for initial support of an overlay feature in the Pi Camera library, uh, as well as a couple examples that utilize it on the Memento device. Um, that was submitted and merged last week. Um, this week I have made a few more enhancements to that library. I submitted new PRs, one for um, supporting what I'm calling sticker overlays. So like the original overlays were full size and they were like a frame around the entire photo. Um, the new overlays now work better um, or, or can work at all, I should say, with uh, smaller images that are just like uh, small and not the full size of the photo. And then you can use the D-pad to change where the sticker is at. So uh, if you imagine like putting, um, you know, sunglasses on top of your photo subject or something like that, that's the kind of thing that this will allow. Um, I also, uh, in a different PR, added support for using custom file names, which was an issue that someone had filed a little while back on that repo, which I thought sounded like a fun uh, challenge to try and work out. And uh, the first example that I submitted with that is using Adafruit NTP library, as well as um, the internal RTC uh, example in that NTP repo in order to save your photos with actual um, timestamps in the file names, like some cameras and phones do. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, the thing that I've been working on uh, mostly this morning is working through some infrastructure issues that are flagged by Adabot. Those get listed over on circuitpython.org um, slash contributing in the infrastructures page. Uh, mostly the ones I've hit so far are all around circup instructions being incorrect, either having the PyPy names or having the short name without the rest of the library name in them. So I've been working through those. Uh, I'm about finished with that though. Um, and that is what I have got so far. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And now we'll hear from ADCC. Thank you, Liz. Hey, I'm continuing work on BLEIO for RP2. Right now, I'm deep into advertising. Uh, also, worked on investigating uh, number 8824 with Argon Blue, and I think we're close to a resolution on that one. So that's it. Excellent, thank you. And now we'll hear from Jerry N. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I've been playing a lot with the uh, um, OV5640 breakout boards, and uh, so and I've uh, been using them with a, a Metro ESP32S3 and a Feather ESP32S3, and um, was able to finally get the uh, autofocus code from the Pi Camera library to work with the breakout boards, and that, that's been fun to play with. Um, it's uh, it, it, before this, it was kind of tricky to, to use those boards. They use a lot of pins on the feather board. There's, I think, there's one pin left, but uh, it, it, it works, it's kind of fun. And then, um, I just started working on trying to take the uh, the RFM library, the RFM 6.9 and RFM 9x libraries, and combine them together into one library that <clears throat> will support both since there's a lot of shared code. Um, the um or there could be a lot of shared code because they most of the functions are the same between the two it's just the uh, some of the registers are, are different um this library probably won't be able to run on the m0 feather m0 boards the m0 rfm 69 or 9x just just won't fit but um it just seems like it's a good good time now to, to see if we can get those working um Excuse me. I opened an issue to discuss this on the RFM 9x repository with a link from the 6.9. So if anybody has any comments or suggestions for what they'd like to see added um, or changed about the way it works, they work. Feel free to put them in there. Uh, my first goal is just to get it up and running without breaking anything and just make it so that it works the way it does now. But um, one library to handle both. Uh, and then I'll start adding some new features if I can. Um, one question I had is whether this should be considered a community library or you want it as an Adafruit library. So uh, just let me know if it's going to be an Adafruit library. I think somebody on Adafruit has to create the uh, the um, base repository so that I can then um, 
um, fork it and 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 populate it. But um, I'm starting off with a, just a private library that I can work with. But uh, let me know how you want to handle that. And also, um, if you have any thoughts about what the name should be, um, I thought about just using Circuit Python RFM. But uh, again, open for suggestions. You can just stick them in that issue or or get a hold of me. Um, in addition to that, there's there's a bunch of lingering issues um, for both those libra libraries. So I'm trying to clean those up as I go along. A lot of them, or several of them, were ones that had just been languishing that hadn't had any attention and that also weren't clear that they um, were um, really um, actual issues of the library. So I've I've closed those and we'll see if if, if they get reopened if they if they need to be that's fine if I over, overdid it and that's it thanks thank you and uh, I see that Scott put in the chat I may just integrate into an existing library repository I'm not sure if anyone else on the team had thoughts they wanted to share before we move on to the next yeah. status update um, we could talk in the wings too okay. if you want okay. Uh, and now I'll read for Justin, who is text only. Uh, got connection manager in the bundle and frozen onto boards that need it. Opened a few PRs that use legacy set socket methods that needed to be merged before the changes to requests. The PR to requests is set and ready for final review. Removed old socket code, updated all examples, and got code coverage to 85%. And random fact, so far 11 PRs have been opened to make this change and 8 are merged. And now we'll hear from Maker Melissa. Hello. Um, I fixed an issue with the CircuitPython code editor where it was refusing to connect via web workflow. Um, I worked on writing a memento guide with web workflow, uh, but I ran into a bug where the SD cards couldn't be accessed remotely. I filed a bug for that. Uh, for the time being, I'm working on GitHub issues, and then I'll switch back to working on PyEyes. Unless the issue gets fixed, then I can finish up the guide. And that's where I'm at. All right, thank you. And now we'll hear from... Hello. Um, we're doing roof repair at the house, so that's taking some of my brain space. Um, Ari got sick last night as well, so that is... is May where maybe where my week goes. Uh, last week I fixed uh, SSL socket binding. I also fixed a PW, PWM out crash on SAMD and standardized PWM related classes to using the finalizer only. The crash, as as we saw in deep dives, not last week but the week before, was caused by like using bulk reset along with finalizer stuff, um, and, and those not working together well. So I. I standardize across all the ports on just doing finalizer stuff. Um, I was working on two USB host bugs that uh, Foaming I found, but I need uh, some feedback from TAC to finish them up, although I do have a PR out to do some improvements. And then I'm going to circle back on the 9.0 bugs and see how, uh, what we can do to get those uh, cleaned up and fixed so that we can get 9.0 into release candidate. Thank you. And now I'll read for Tectric, who is not present. And the past week, I uh, released my new CircFirm CLI tool, which aims to allow updating CircuitPython firmware for boards from the terminal. It was inspired by CircUp and also an issue where many boards had to be updated for the PyCon sprints. And then this week, continue to improve CircFirm, prepare my other two tool, CircLink, auto-syncing pushing code from local directory to board for updates, including cross-platform usage. I'd love to make some small tweaks to how Adabot calculates library downloads. Pi, Pi Stats is a library that removes a dependence on performing big query updates manually. And forever busy with grad school, but please don't hesitate to ping me in Discord regarding issues I can help with. I likely will not see them otherwise. And that was status updates. And next up is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for long form discussions that either come out of status updates or the folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around. See if anyone has topics. And with that, uh, we had the topic from Jerry N about the RFM uh, module libraries uh, that uh, came up in status updates. 
So that's where folks on the team want to talk about what they want to do for the naming. Yeah, so this goes back to Jerry's thing. I think um, I've always pushed us to have separate repos, but I, I think in this case, it makes a lot of sense to combine them. I would kind of like, I'd rather not lose the history of the current repos. So what I'm imagining is that like, whichever repo came first probably has the more has more history. Um, and the, the other one was based on probably. So I would start basically make a pull request to the repo that you think should live longer, where we um, kind of update it there. Um, update it in place rather than starting a new one. I guess that has a problem if we change the package name, but... Yeah, I, I, I was thinking that since this new library is not going to run on M0s, we're either going to have to tell people to use an old version with a different name. So... Right. I thought it was okay to to make a new a new library. I mean, I mean, I don't want I don't I don't want to have to maintain three libraries then though, right? No, no. But I think we could archive. We we do, we could just deprecate the old ones and just say these are only for use. Um. Uh. With 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 on these M zero boards with, without flash. Right. Not external flash. I, I mean, I think I think it would be good to start from scratch. I mean, okay. or, you know, obviously you're not going to start completely from scratch, but <laughs> um, yeah, I think it would also it would be confusing to use one of the existing names because they are specific to the RFM six nine or nine nine X. Yeah, and, and they really are different, like uh, you know, radio modules. So I, I think using one or 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 the other would be would be very confusing to people who are <laughs> have the boards. It, well, isn't that an argument for not having a shared one then? Well, if it, again, a thing the shared one, it, it would be you know the RFM is 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 combined. Um, we you know we could really go either way. There's there's not. I mean, it's not it's not going to save any. As I was looking into it and doing it, the only thing it this really saves is makes it a little easier to write examples and guides probably um but you know maybe it you know maybe there isn't <laughs> a real well i mean what i what i found in the past is that when i make a change to one and improvement to something i end up usually doing the same thing to the others mm -hmm. um but that was when we were installing you know features that really were common um adding things like the um the reliable data and load and 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 stuff like that. Um, going forward, I think Dan has talked. You know, thought it'd be nice to add some async I/O support and things like that, which again would probably be common to both. But it, it, it's probably not a big deal to to maintain. Um, well, is, there, is there is there a common like? Would you make a common superclass? Or, or just some common code. I mean, we could have three libraries. You could have a base library, like portal base, you know, and then uh, Laura and non Laura versions. I don't know how much extra code there is. Is the yeah. API really similar, or do the APIs kind of diverge? Well, I think the goal in the would make the APIs identical. Um, you know, that would be the only reason to make any sense. The, the real difference is. You know, so, you know, I'm sort of modeling this after the idea of like the radio head library on Arduino where, where there are several different radio protocols that are all done with the exact same API. So that was the goal. But, you know, it's, it, it, it you know, it, it, and it is communicating and with, the, with the RFM modules also the same, except for or something like. Like, is there really no difference? Like, does it is this is the protocol difference pushed down to the physical level, and from the user's point of view, there's no for 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 the examples that we are using for them, they are okay. You know, um, that's to do a basic you know basic packet transmission, and so I mean there are a lot of things you can do that that they look the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like you know, so the the whole send and re transmit and receive and 
acknowledgements and uh, you know act packets and uh, all the addressing modes and all that stuff really is the same between them. Um, and the one thing I was thinking about adding was a you know a headerless version, which is just one that just sends raw packets with no with no protocol. Nothing it wouldn't support the radio hub, but it'd be compatible with some of the other libraries that are out there. But that's just to send again basic just raw packets. Um, and there are some differences in them. You know, the are the six nine can only handle a sixty byte packet, where the Laura can handle a 250 page back. There are, there are differences. Um, but in our basic operation, you know, we use them pretty much interchangeably. I think that sounds um, really good because that means also somebody could write some code and say, ah, you know, now I want to use something that's longer range and their code doesn't change. Really. That, so that was the, my hope. Right. Yeah. So I, I would say, if you can start a library yourself and um, use cookie cutter like it as documented in the learn guides, and we can you can transfer that repo to Adafruit when you feel that it's ready. Okay, and that, that's easy. Or you know, can even and then we rename it, we rename it at the time, yeah. stuff like that. Okay, it's, that's, it's, that's, that's except what I'm for a few about. things in in the you know the kind of the repo, the build specific files. There, it's really. The difference between a community and an Adafruit library is is pretty small, and and the transfer we can take care of those when we when we do the transfer. Yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, that's what I yeah. uh, started, and um, yeah, I'll go ahead and, and get a, a framework set, and then I'll I'll you know I'll make it <laughs> I'll I'll put a link out there for people to to take a look and see if if what I'm doing makes sense too. Because this is you know this is I'm not real familiar with the best ways to lay out a library like this that is you know and I'm using uh. Actually, I've been using the RGB library as a, as a guide for how to have something that has lots of different modules that support it. <laughs> so um, hopefully that was a good one to start with. But um, OK. Um, right now, I'll just call it CircuitPython RFM and go from there. And yeah. again, we can, always, we can always change that. That sounds good, yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, and my, my thinking was, yeah, that on the two existing libraries, essentially, you know, freeze them except unless for you know bug fixes that that turn up that are important to the M zero board, but not try and and add more features to those. Right, and we have examples of libraries like that that we haven't archived so much that we closed all the issues, but that are def are prominently marked as deprecated. So okay. that's that's good, and then we, and then the, there's a process of rewriting a lot of the guides, maybe so. That's a whole other story. So, yeah, well, that, that's my my goal too is to come up with you know common examples that, that can be just ported from one to the other. Yeah, because yeah. there are, I think there are a lot of users. I, I, I'm hoping. I think people would tend to do that um, because they really, you know, functionally they're, they are very very similar. But um, okay, I, 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 that, that's 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 my viewpoint, and and. I think if you start with that, then it'll quickly, if if there's something where it seems like, oh, they really should be different, it'll be obvious to you. But it's, so far, the answer is no, it seems like. Yeah, OK. Well, again, as yeah. people see it, feel free to, you know, to poke at yeah. it and tell, you know, change, <laughs> change the direction. That's fine. Sure. Right, thanks. OK. All right. Thanks, folks. And that is it for In the Weeds. Uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, this has been CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, February 26, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.